The following is an exclusive presentation of Prism Sports. It's been nearly a full month since the Wings laced them up at the Spectrum. A stellar performance against Washington, assuring the Wings of a berth in the North American Cup playoffs. And the wait began. Meantime, the New York Saints and the Detroit Turbos hooked up in a classic double overtime semifinal for the right to fight for the major indoor lacrosse league title. There it is! That's the game ender! New York, the first lead of the game, takes their team to the championship with Philadelphia. Still, the wings waited, loose, relaxed, prepared. And now their moment has arrived. The two deepest, strongest teams in the league collide. The North American Cup is on the line as the Philadelphia Wings host the defending champion, New York Saints, next. That North America Cup symbolic of excellence in professional indoor lacrosse on the line tonight. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Spectrum. I'm Larry Rosen with the head coach of lacrosse, University of Pennsylvania, Tony Seaman. Obviously, title excitement in the air tonight. It sure is. This is what it's all about. This is the gold ring, the big championship. Watch the whole thing. This is why you came to play. Philadelphia earned first place in the regular season. New York got here by beating Detroit in the semifinals. Who's got the advantage having laid off or played? Hard to say. I think we'll find out as the game goes on. I think the first half is a really important half for the Wings. They've got to stay close. They haven't played in four weeks. At the same time, New York comes in a little battered up. They play Detroit, the most physical team with the stick there is in the whole leg. Their wrists are hurting a little bit, their elbows, their shoulders. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think they can stay close. It's going to be a great game. Joining Tony and I, our third man in tonight is Prism's Mark Zumoff. Mark will be behind the scenes, if you will, tonight. Right now, he's on the field, a dangerous place to be pregame. Let's go downstairs to Mark right now. Larry, pregame just moments ago, I had the privilege of being in the locker room as Coach Dave Evans gave his pregame speech to his Wings team. Most of the players staring stoically at the floor, some of them stretching only one player. Lou, big number 77, Lou Delagati, showing some spirit, interspersing some cheers to his team as Evans spoke. Evans did tell us afterwards that his team frequently plays well after a poor practice. Perhaps I should add uh, hesitatingly that his team just has come off of an excellent practice. Gentlemen. All right, thanks very much, Mark Zumoff. Of course, Brad Kotz has been the spiritual and physical leader on the floor for Philadelphia as we let you know about some of the individual personalities. Kotz, the number one scorer in terms of goals and points for Philadelphia. What's he bring to the floor? Oh, he brings the best shot probably in the game of lacrosse. His location is unbelievable. Every shot's on the pipes. And if the goalie can't make the save, it's in. He's done it 28 times this year, almost twice as many as anybody else in the league. He's unbelievable. 28 goals in 92 shots. Meantime, New York doesn't really have an individual goal scorer that we can really focus on, but Jeff Nicholas was the MVP of the semifinal game, part of the cookie-cutter scorers for New York. Yeah, they're a bunch of clones. They all kind of play the same way, but Jeff Nicholas has been outstanding the last two games. A Virginia graduate, an All-American from Cold Spring Harbor, New York. He, he gets the job done. Very similar to Brad Cotts in his location. In the beginning of the season, we talked about Philadelphia's goalkeeping as maybe being a weak point for them, but Kevin Bilger has stepped forward to play an Ironman role for Philadelphia, a very steady performer. God, he has been, Larry. He's just been the concrete, a wall for them. We said in the beginning that he was going to be a big question mark, and he's done a great job. Game after game, he's got his biggest job to go tonight. He will play 60 minutes. Meantime, New York will split some time between Larry Quinn and Vinnie Pfeiffer. Larry Quinn, a bigger, more mobile player. Vinnie Pfeiffer, a wonderful player in Philadelphia a year ago. What's the difference? Well, Vinnie's a great athlete all around, can get the job done, really relies on a great deal of reaction and quickness and his athletic ability. Larry Quinn, everybody says, the best goalie probably to ever play in the game of lacrosse. He's just got great position, great technique, and he's a great outlet passer. The uh, lacrosse world certainly professionally is all gathered in Philadelphia. The collegiate world, do they care at all? Are they aware of what's going on tonight? Oh, yeah, I think so. Definitely well aware. There's a lot of these guys that coach and assistant coaches on a lot of college teams. The lacrosse community is so small. Everybody wants to know who won, who's ahead, who's winning, you know, who's playing well. And uh, everybody's got their eyes watched on the spectrum tonight, and it looks like most of Philadelphia is going to be here. Indeed, they are. It's the biggest night in lacrosse indoor history. Tony and I and Mark coming back, starting lineups and more in a moment. Stay tuned, everybody. Major Indoor Lacrosse on Prism is brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of Major Indoor Lacrosse. It's the right beer now. By U.S. Air, by the USA on U.S. Air. By the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Hotel, headquarters of the Philadelphia Wings. By STX, when you think lacrosse, think STX. And by Gold Medal Sporting Goods. With 10 convenient locations, it's the official sporting goods store of the Wings.
and the electrified atmosphere here at the Spectrum. Good evening again, everybody. Larry Rosen with Tony Seaman, Mark Zumoff, our third man in down on the field, back in the locker room for the major indoor lacrosse league championship. Clearly, a uh, first and second division of the mill this year, Philadelphia and New York, meeting for the championship. New York beat Detroit in sudden death overtime, a second overtime. The only time they led all game long was the Golden Eliminated, the Detroit Turbos. Tonight's starters, the familiar Tucker line for Philadelphia, John Tucker, the co-captain, along with the face-off expert down at the bottom, Bill Durgill and Kevin Bilger in goal. Vinny Pfeiffer, a former Philadelphia, is in goal for the Saints, and they'll start Sambato, and we'll tell you more about him as we move along. The scratches tonight include Hannum, Crothers, McGinney, Carney, Bozell, and Mark Michello, the backup goalkeeper. Wall for New York, Mike Nelson, Gary Blue, Andy Phillips, Fred Opie, the big defenseman, and the two Huffs will not play tonight. Our referees tonight, Rich Tamborino in the middle, a veteran, Tom Young and Bruce Crawford. You know all three of those guys, Tony, huh? Yeah, they've all done games of mine already this year. So we are set for the opening of the third major indoor lacrosse league championship game. First one ever in Philadelphia. The Saints, when they were based in New Jersey, were the winners a year ago. Here's the opening faceoff between Durgil and Borges. A big difference already because uh, Scott Huff for the Saints is not here, and he gave Durgil big problems in their first and only meeting, and now we see Durgil win it clean. He's in command, and Durgil was breaking free. Tucker had a look. John Tucker just touched the ball with his hand, which is a no-no, so it goes over to the Saints. The Saints will run and run and run. They are not as much of a half-court team as any other in the league. Again, for those of you joining us for the first time, a 45-second shot clock in the indoor box game. And the Saints move to our left. That is Vinny Sambato taking the first shot. Might have caught a pipe to the left of Kevin Bilger. And it does reset the clock. That is Dan Borges out of CW Post working the right side. Bit of a stationary offensive set as Borges tries to go one-on-one. -on -one. Zimbrato is so much like Tucker, number 16, the Saints, Vinny Zimbrato. He's a, a great one-two step ball player, great dip dodger. Norm Key drops out for Jeff Goldberg as they weave across the top with 18 on the shot clock. John Driscoll. And that is John Driscoll, worked over by John Tucker. Gets a bit of a screen from Zimbrato. Shot clock in single digits. And a midsection save by Kevin Bilger. Possession, Philadelphia. In the person of Scott Gabrielson. And again, Tony, the first several minutes key for Philadelphia because they've not played since the 10th of March. Yes, and a nice defense, real nice defense then by the Wings. Kevin Bilger gets hit with a shot. He gets into the game. Everybody's into the game for the Wings. And the line change is completed. That is Andy Wilson, number 55, out of Windsor, Ontario and a graduate of uh, Loyola of Maryland, leaves for Brad Cotts. The league's preeminent scorer, Cotts, turns passer for a moment, tries to find Wilson coming off the slot. Recovered instead by Randy Moreno. There he is in the open floor. And Mr. Moreno can play the game, an All-American three-timer from Virginia. I mean, this is a, this, Larry, is uh, the United States world team you're watching play here tonight. There's seven guys from the Saints that are probably going to make the world team and three from the, the Wings. And that, that means the best lacrosse players in the whole United States. And we got ten of them out here tonight. The left-hand shot is a left-foot save off Randy Natale, and the quick outlet is in the person of Tony Resch, the assistant captain, the alternate captain, one-time defensive back at Yale. Conley looks for that hop step shot of his from the far left wing, but instead it's Wilson who leaves for Cotts. Cotts will get a lot of double team attention, tries to dip and dive to Resch. Picked up in the corner, Gary Martin. The Penn Stater spins in front, over the shoulder wide left. And the rebound belongs to Resch, and his shot goes well wide. Philadelphia, though, showing good floor balance early on. Eliminating the transition game of New York. We played just over three minutes. Major indoor lacrosse league championship is scoreless. First time the two teams met, the Saints jumped off to a big 13 to six lead in the first half. And, and that's, that was crucial in them winning the game. Wow, Kevin Cook gets a rush all of his own. 
but Bilger beats him down low and accepts the rebound pass from Andy Wilson. The long outlet, hot. Three on two with Delegati. Looks for Luke, goes the other way to Delegati, score! Great job, great ball movement. And Philadelphia draws first blood in the person of Lou Delegati. Okay, you see it come down. Koch goes to the middle. That's the first principle of a good fast break. Makes the pass to Martin. Martin to Louis, and Louis's got Pfeiffer on the move. Puts it home before Pfeiffer can cover the net on the strong side. It's a great play. There you see it again, and Louis finds that little hole in the top right-hand corner of the goal. I guess by having Brad Kotz at the top, a defender has to commit to Bradley. He gives it up and sets up a two-on-one. Absolutely, and you know from basketball ball and all your experience there, Larry, that you got to... You got to take the ball to the middle of the court, come down the center, and then fill the lanes with the people without the ball. The Wings did it to perfection. Here is Durgil against Miko Red Arrow in a key faceoff match. And Durgil wants to gain the ground ball himself. Cannot. It's broken free. And a good job by Mark DeSico to free up Matt McGeady. McGeady, nice up wing pass. And a score by Paul French. Paul French. A lovely look from Matt McGeady. And Mark DeSico did all the work to free up the possession. Two goals in 15 seconds. Yeah, he really does. And they, and they hit, and McGeady sees French. And nobody's better, probably, from that angle than Paul French. Once again, a great position shooter. He got the good location. He goes off the hip on Pfeiffer. That's a real tough one to save. Good velocity, good place. It all starts on the faceoff. Durgil gets the ball out, and you notice that three or four wings went for the ball, or excuse me, Saints, and that caused them not to be ready. And they got the transition play down at the other end, and French sinks it home. So the two finishers do the job. Delgatti and French, two zip, wings. French, a native of Niagara, Canada, an All-American at the University of Virginia, and a prolific goal scorer his entire career. 2-0 Philadelphia, here comes New York. In the open floor, Don Borges goes behind. Looks out front, deep to Jeff Goldberg. He's a shooter, sidearm wide. Goldberg's a little different in this game because he's going to take a lot of outside sidearm shots. McGeady takes a run at Vinny Pfeiffer. Vinny slumps him off like a flea. Yeah, but we've made, you know... Score! Sombrano working a weave out front. Right across the top of the slot, the right-hand sidearm shot is past Bilger. It's 2-1. We mentioned it before, number 16, Vinny Sombrano. He's got that unbelievable quickness. There you see, off the hip, real tough shot. Got Bilger moving a little bit and puts it home. And, of course, Bilger sliding to his right, lost it off his left hip. And, again, that's one of the most difficult places for a goaltender to stop, right around the crook of the elbow above the hip. Anything I've ever said to you, Larry Rosen, about John Tucker and his athletic ability and his unbelievable uh, step dodges and quickness. The video tape replay of him is Vinny Zabrato. Zabrato, an All-American out of Hofstra University. Scoring a couple of goals the last time these two teams met. Philadelphia, again, off the Dilger work, gets the draw. And they will complete the line change. Gabrielson drops it out front for Ricky Freed. Freed, one of the few lacrosse players born in Frankfurt, Germany, played the game at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, working the top. Long look inside for the crashing Tucker. Recovered Mark Hahn. Works around behind. Straight man-to-man -man set defensively for the New York Saints. Free gets a little bit of a pick from Gabrielson and fires a weak bouncer. The rebound's right there for Manley. And a crease violation. And a great save by Vinny Pfeiffer. That should have been number three. That's a great save. My goodness, he had time for several fakes before he launched it. And Pfeiffer held his ground. Randy Here's Randy Natoli out of Virginia. These for Nicholas and Jeff Nicholas shot. Handled quickly and easily by Kevin Bilger. And the outlet frees up Scott Gabrielson. We played just over five minutes. Major Indoor Lacrosse League single game championship. Philadelphia two, the Saints of New York just won. So many things about these teams are so similar. Their speed is just unbelievable. The speed that's on this field right now, 10 young men can all fly. I mean, they are just, and maybe the Saints have a little bit more depth in that all-around speed than, than the Wings do. And a whistle out front, and an illegal screen set by Tony Resch, and a quick change of possession. And Philadelphia must react quickly to all those kind of whistles, because New York's going to look to move. 
All right, Randy Moreno at the top, works to his left, looks behind. Walking out flat from the corner is Kevin Cook. In front of Bilger, the high save off Moreno. And fans the rebound himself. And Bilger comes out. Brilliantly like a chimney sweep. And here comes a three on two if they hurry. Cox is in the middle. Oh, and the pass behind him from Tony Resch. An ill-advised poor pass sets up a two on one. Nico Redauer. Shot is wide by Darren Miller. As he tried to go high glove side on Kevin Bilger. Cook. A lot of weaving, slashing offensive work, Tone. Yeah, and a lot of off the ball. They did, and not really a lot of picks, but a lot of quickness where you get your man to turn his head to find out where the ball is and how that defenseman, if you're going to have to help out, and then your guy's gone. And that's what uh, New York relies on. They'll do some pick and rolls, as we just saw there. But there are a lot of off the ball just cuts by open men. Very good feeding team. Look for a lot of assists. Tony Resch broke it free to J.C. Conley. And J.C. the spin. These for Brad Cotts but he's on the ground. And back the other way comes Dave McCullough out of Hofstra University. Switches to right-handed, leaves for Johnny Driscoll. Driscoll, low shot, score! He takes Bilger low by dropping his stick and then he puts it in the up corner right off the hip. Real nice shot. See the pass back, nobody really picks him up. He drops his stick and then he puts it up above the knee, right off that hip. That's a hard place to make a save. Well, we played almost the entire first half of the first quarter, tied at two apiece. Back at the Spectrum in a moment. Spectrum again in the game tied at two, courtesy of John Driscoll, Tony. Yeah, real real nice uh, taunt here. He, he fakes the goalie low by dropping his stick, and then he comes up with the ball, and you see he come right up past Bilger's hip. It's that V section there where your body kind of cuts in, and it's a hard place to make a save, and to get your body over against the pipe is almost impossible. As noted, Driscoll had 13 regular season goals. You're going to... Notice on this face-off here, Larry, Borges likes to cheat a lot. By that, I mean he takes his stick, it's supposed to be parallel, and he tries to move it ahead. The last time he had it ahead, a little inch, two inches, that makes a big difference to Durgil when Borges can cheat like that and the ref doesn't catch him. And they get the straight possession for New York and complete the line change with Engelke, brother of the coach, Bob Engelke. And at the top, Vince Ambrato. That's Trying to match uh, Chris Dent up with Vinny Zimbrato. That's a tough, boy, is that a tough task for Chris Dent, first-year player, first year out of college, going against the old vet. Loose ball belongs to John Driscoll. Shot clock's at 10 right now. Quick little feed inside for Driscoll, but Dent's right on his tail. And a Philadelphia possession, a fresh shot clock. Here they come. New York doing a decent job of transition defense, limiting the uh, wing's chances, and Paul French just had it roll off his stick and a turnover for Randy Natoli. It's for Tom Engelke, the youngest of the three Engelke brothers on the left wing. Looked at by French. Philadelphia kind of sucking wind a little bit, Tony, after the first 10 minutes or so. The emotional excitement of the opening moments is gone. They're into a game right now. Yeah, they certainly are. This is going to be a, a drawn-out affair here. Matt Nagini crunches into the boards as Crowley's shot hits Chris Dent in the midsection. Boy, they hurt. They hurt. Do you realize it didn't go in? And then it feels <laughs> a little bit better. New York controlling play, but the shot clock's at three. Tom Engelke's got a fire. Two, one. That'll be a violation. 45-second violation. Turnover New York. That was a set play there before where the uh, Saints only put five people on, on the floor, four people on the floor, and they hold that fifth guy out, and they get a double team by the wings, and all of a sudden the guy comes off the bench. They just roll the ball back any way they can, and there was Crowley all alone, and he took the shot that hit Chris Dent. So I think the uh, wings are going to have to become aware of that by the Saints. Interesting new wrinkle. Out of the half-court set, Tucker tries the long side. Tries to beat the basket of Pfeiffer. And New York has handled the ground balls. Solid shot. 
two of them delivered by Philadelphia. And guess who? John Tucker. John Tucker says maybe you guys are a little bit quicker all the way around, but we might be a little bit more physical and tougher. Mark Hahn tries a bad angle shot out of the corner. And think, here comes Cook. I think that's two important scratches tonight for the Saints is the Huff brothers, uh, Scott and Kevin, both big physical uh, enforcers for the Saints. And the, those two guys are missing from the lineup. So although you've got so much all-around talent and speed for the Saints, you really don't have the physical toughness of some of the guys like Delgatti and French and, and Tucker especially. The high screen for Marino leads to a shot that's wide. There's Marino looking for the rebound. Goes over the top of the cage as Mark Hahn decks him. Shot clock back to 10 again. At the top, Nicholas shot, hits his teammate in the midsection, Moreno. Shot clock is at three once more as Cook winds. He'll not get it off. Another violation, New York. I wouldn't be surprised if Dave Evans had said to this team on the bench, hey, we got to start using a little bit more of our bodies. We got to get out of here. They aren't as physical as us. If you can crunch them a little bit on defense, let them get them thinking about it. Well, the Philadelphia Wings have taken a timeout with 4.19 remaining in period number one. And Tony, that was the point I was just about to make. Does the team begin to get a sense that, hey, we're a bit stronger as the game goes along and gain some confidence from that? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely think so. And, and plus, you're going to become an intimidator a little bit. And no matter how well you pick and cut and stuff, if you know you're going to get knocked on your fanny every once in a while or often, you're going to start looking for that. You take your eye off the ball that's coming to you. You don't catch it as cleanly. You don't take quite as long to set up the good shot if you know you're going to get uh, blasted. So I think that becomes a real important factor here for the wings. And it's something that we might want to check on with Mark Zumoff down on that wing bench, too, to find out if that's true or not. Mark is eavesdropping. We'll go to him shortly. There's one of the open floor hits. And he watched John Tucker comes from the blind side. And that was real close to being from behind, but I think he got the front part of the shoulder before the man turned, but that's really important. And there's Bob Engelke. Bobby told me before the game that he thought the crowd here might be worth two or three goals to the Philadelphia Wings with the uh, largest crowd in the uh, indoor lacrosse history here in the building tonight. I don't know if I agree with that, but I think that, you know, certainly it has an effect when it gets rolling and, and gets into the game. But, God, these guys are here to play for the championship, and these are the defending champions of the league. So I don't think a crowd's going to score many goals. I, I think it's got to be the players. Straight man-to-man, -man, but they will switch will the Saints off screens. As now John Tucker faces a smaller Jeff Nicholas in front. Manley's got an angle. Craig Manley off the lovely look from Tucker. You want to see patience, and you want to see setting a goalie up. He really does it beautifully. He gets Pfeiffer moving. And remember, Pfeiffer's a mover. And you see him make the fake with his stick and commits Pfeiffer with all his body and his stick. It's a great pass. Watch him. He commits him, and then he's got him at his bay. He's got him up in the air. When he lands, he just puts it over his shoulder. That's one of the faults of Vinny Pfeiffer. I don't know if you can really call it a fault. It's a tendency of him as a goaltender to react to the ball and to the fake. And there's part of the near sellout throng on hand here at the Spectrum. And the view from behind, Kevin Bilger as the faceoff about to go off in front of us. Bill Durgel got 79% of the faceoffs during the regular season and wins this one off the violation. Yeah, Borges put his foot onto Durgel's stick, and that's illegal, so, Borg so uh, Durgel gets the faceoff. And Andy Wilson comes in for Durgel to complete the line shift. Brad Cott's moving well without the ball. Looking for it. There he is at the top. Looking for a Gary Barnes screen, but goes the other way. Gets double team. Finds Conley. Just wide, short side. As they are double teaming Cots, seemingly when he gets the ball. Yeah, they're going to go get him. They certainly don't want him to get that shot off. There's a great inside roll. Carpet's a little slippery, Larry, from what I can see. I, where they got it taped over, I notice it's moving on the seams almost on every cut. And this carpet has been down for about 28, 29 hours, the longest before any of the uh, regular season contests, and they were hoping the seal would be strong. Jeff Goldberg with an excuse me shot to the midsection of Kevin Bilger, almost a why bother. That's a Pat and Goldberg, though, and you can't believe how many of those will go in for him over the course <laughs> of the game. So you're going to see that five or six times, and you go, why is he taking that? And then all of a sudden, it's two in a row score. Smallest man of the field, J.C. Conley is stripped and a breakaway. 2 on 0. Crowley with Goldberg. Here goes Crowley. Stops. And he's beaten by Bilger. A huge save from Kevin. And back 
the other way, it's just a two on three. How about Kevin holding his ground? Oh, how about, does that pump you up? Does that get the adrenaline flowing in Kevin Bilger or what? Does he say, come on, baby, I can save anything you got at me tonight. And Sweet Lou Delegati works left wing, drops out front for DeSico, has McGeady rushing. There's McGeady, the jab step to the middle, loses possession. Ground ball picked up by Dent, has Delegati. No goal! Crease violation, Lou Delegati, and I think he knew it. Yeah, he certainly isn't arguing, but he's getting back on D2. That's a real, real close call. If I was Dave Evans, I'd be upset. Last two minutes, first period. Glad you're with us tonight for the Major Indoor Lacrosse League Championship. John Driscoll pops off the bench, works the left wing, where he's got Randy Natoli on Lou Delegati. He's got an open man behind the net, but he switches hands. There it is to him, but it's wide. Looking for Tommy Ankelke. Over the board she goes. Philadelphia possession. You know, all the young lacrosse players in the world who are watching this game tonight, there's a great lesson by Chris Dent. Not only is it important to pick a ground ball up, but it's most important to move it once you pick it up. And he found Delgatti right away, all alone in front of the goal, and that sets up the whole shot and the whole play because Dent not only picked it up, but he knew where he was going with it when he did. And boy, is that important. Delgatti has that patented shoulder cradle. The shot is high and wide. Lou loves to caress his stick up around the neck. That's right, and he's got such strength and size, bulk size. Nobody really on the Saints matches up well with him, and he can be a force doing that kind of thing. Now, he's just got to get that shot on goal. It beat uh, Pfeiffer, but it's to no avail when you don't hit the cage. There's Miko Red Arrow from Hofstra University, one of the Native Americans. I'm going to have a holding minor coming up on McGinney as the arms are raised and we'll have our first uh, man advantage and this is an easy call huh yeah he goes over the head to try to get it and then he gets gets caught up you see his stick gets kind of stuck you know it's a, it's a decision then he pulls him down and pretty smart play by the saint he goes down with the pressure and uh, sure. the referee says oh i got to call a foul here and to set up his man advantage bob engelke will call a timeout and we'll keep it live. Yeah, man up now. We're going to see a lot of ball movement by the Saints. They're going to, uh, they once again want to find the layup, I think, instead of the outside shot, although you can't tell when Goldberg's out there. He might fire and crank from the outside, but uh, they're going to move the ball around a lot and, and look for their best shooters inside and see if they can't get a layup against Bilger inside. Bilger's just been unbelievable tonight. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to Lou Delegati who would have given the Wings a 4-2 advantage. See if the foot crosses the crease line. They're 77 alone, Tone. You see what I mean about Chris Dent? What a great look. Yeah, he's standing. Boy, that's a tough call that by was. a referee. Oh, man. I mean, if anything's on it, his toenail's on it. And a referee member is standing right where our camera is standing now, and I guess he's solid on the red line. But, boy, I hope you're going to call that consistently all night long. Again, you must be on the red line, not across the red line. Correct? Or is it the other way around? No, it's just got to touch it. Yeah, all that's you right. You just right. Gotta, if you touch the line at all, it is not as in basketball where a backcourt, you must go all the way across, etc. It's just simply touching the line. Right. And here's that potent New York man advantage team with 44 seconds left in the first period and counting. And they have a four-man umbrella on the perimeter with Goldberg, Engelke, and an interference change of possession. Illegal pick set by Matt Crowley. And Philadelphia had two shorthanded goals last time out against Washington. Just want to rag out the period now as we count it down with you. But here comes a two-on-one. Muller drops it out front for Goldberg. Has a cutter in Cook. Left elbow save. Rebound over the top by Jeff Nicholas. And a tackle. Possession will belong to New York with just nine seconds left. Boy, if anybody wants to know if the Wings are here to play or not, look at the intensity, look at that defense, look at that hustle in the last minute here. Unbelievable. There's only three seconds left, and only Engelke realized it as Goldberg did not, and the first stanza comes to a conclusion. It's been fun. It's been tumultuous. The championship game's underway. One quarter complete from the spectrum. Philadelphia three, the Saints two. <laughs> Shots on goal in that first period, 12 for New York, 9 for Philadelphia. Here's Kevin Bilger's moment in the sun in the first period, Tony. Oh, this is unbelievable. Now, you got to hold your ground. I mean, it's 2-1-1. I think one of the big mistakes 
that the Saints make here is that the uh, follow-up guy stays behind Bilger so that it's really one-on-one -on -one and Bilger can just be tall and stand up high. You see number 10 break. He really should have taken the ball to a side and waited for his other. There's six, and six just fouls instead of standing over to the side where he could have been used as a decoy or got the ball. What a great save by Bilger. I think that... Uh, We'll get back to that point. First, our scoring summary, Philadelphia, the 2-0 lead from Delegati and French. Sombrato got New York on the board. They tied it at two moments later before uh, Greg Manley gave Philadelphia the lead at the 11.05. Mark, Tony? I, I just think that, you know, if they had used each other better, the Saints, or excuse me, the Wings, Saints, then uh, they could have used uh, Bilger and put him at bay, but Bilger just made the great save against one guy and comes up high and gets that hand in there and makes a great save, and the Saint might have carried the ball too far in, cut down his own angle. Again, he had three or four more seconds. There wasn't a wing on that side of the field just yet. Here goes New York down to our right in the person of Jeff Nicholas who scored the game winner in the semifinals. Bilger plucks that one off Cook stick out of the air. And McGrath on for the first time for Philadelphia with Bill Durgel. And Pfeiffer commits late. Oh, goodness, Pfeiffer committed late. But still beat Durgel to the ball. And here's Jeff Nicholas working right wing. Eyes over Tony Rash and backs out. Again, a man advantage right now for New York for another 30 seconds as Matt McGinney's in the penalty box. And New York lacking some Christmas as they send Cook moving without the ball through the back up the slot. There he is. That's their set offense. Yep. They'll slide him in there in that man up situation and uh, just get him in the middle and try to get him the ball. And he'll either hit a corner or take the shot. He took the shot. Bilger's just been unbelievable. Let in a soft goal perhaps early on and has really settled into this one. Was the penalty expires in three, two, one. Teams at full strength breakaway. Crowley again. Same man, different result. It's 3-3. Yeah, only so many times to Matt Crowley are you going to get away with it, with that great save and letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. That time he went by Bilger and fakes him. One of the things, if you're going to come for that ground ball when you're the only guy, why dive like that? Why not just pull back and play good D? He puts it right by hip side, and he's got him at bay. He carried him that time and made him take a couple steps. And again, that will be an even strength goal. As the goal comes a few seconds after the penalty had expired, we're tied three apiece. And now J.C. Conley will take a draw for Philadelphia against Borges, not Durgel. Well, Durgel was out there for that whole man down situation after the faceoff, which he lost. So I think that Evans figures he's tired. So let Conley take one here. What a nervous pop that Dave Evans was before the game. He said he brought two sport jackets just in case the first one gets a little bit poured on post game. He's hoping for it. And again, Conley does not win the draw. It's possessed by the Saints. Tied at three. And Tucker meets Marino at the top. Off the ball and stepping out is Tom Sweeney. Knees for Natoli. Looks in front. Shot clock down to 17. As again, Tony, they're looking for the layup. Yeah, they are. They're a big layup team. They really believe in that philosophy. And it totally goes off the right hip and a crease violation on the rebound. Frees up Philadelphia for a three on two. Here's Mark Hahn off the bench. Can't get it to him. There he was. As Mark Hahn came out the left side of the bench. One on one the other way. Randy Marino. And Tucker just puts him on the floor. Eats some carpet. And Marino takes a stick swing. At Scotty Gabrielson's in no avail. Here comes Gabrielson up the right wing. Settles and goes behind. Gabrielson, a native of Princeton, New Jersey, working hard. And Tucker tries to stop the ball, but Mullen just works right off him. To McCullough. Instead, it's Kevin Cook from the rear. In front to Mullen. And a great diving effort to no avail. Miko Renau breaks it free from Mark Hod, and it's Dave McCulloch. Real good intensity by the wings, though, and then they're really throwing their bodies around. I think it's important. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell in the third and fourth quarters. Left foot save by Kevin Bilger. Off the stick of Jeff Nicholas. Rebound, though, belongs to New York. Cutting across the wing. Wing to wing is Cook. Left shoulder save and a crease violation. And again, New York 
really wants to work it down low. Yeah, and Bilger's been unbelievable inside. He's making every big save. You notice, I mean, I think the Saints are well ahead now of shots in the second period, and it's a big factor. Nine. It's 5-0 in shots, Tony, in period number two. Bilger's been the reason that it's a tie, that's for sure. The, the uh, Wings have got to control the ball a little bit better on offense, trying to do too much stuff one-on-one. -on -one. And Brad Cotts has been shut down by Sambrato. Gets a screen, they jump switch on him, as expected. J.C. Conley at the top. Andy Wilson takes the hit and goes uh, left side low, and Vinny handles it. Yeah, there's Vinny Pfeiffer as an athlete. He goes over to his left hand and makes the save left-handed and then throws the ball out left-handed, and he's a right-hander. And walking it up is Vinny Sambrato. And again, takes that kind of uncontested 40-foot shot that Kevin eats up. And Bilger walks it 20 feet out front and leaves for Andy Wilson. And Wilson goes to the middle of the floor. Very little out of the set offense for Philadelphia. Now, clearly, Dave Evans wants to control tempo and use up lots of time on the perimeter on each possession. Give and go to Rush. Left elbow save, Eddie Pfeiffer. That was a great uh, pick and roll play by Brad Kotz. He set that up. Rush made the pick and then rolled to the cage. Kotz hit him. Wilson's shot is broken down before it can reach the net. Gary Martin fights for the rebound. Comes out with it. Has a man. Rush. Score. No, Brad Kotz. Brad Kotz with a lovely head fake and a score. You can't find anybody better to give the ball to in front of the cage than Brad Kotz. The Saints are all complaining because they think they took the ball. That's interference on the goalie stick. The question is, is in the ball in the crease? There's Kotz putting it away, hip side. You just don't stop him from there. Martin came underneath the fight for stick, took the ball, found Kotz all alone. Watch him. Oh, man, it's home. Again, his shooting percentage is legendary. Now 29 goals in 94 shots. An almost unheard of percentage in lacrosse. You know, he's always been a great shooter, but if you talk to him, he'll tell you, every day at Penn, at our practices at Penn, he warms up all our goalies every single day. So he's probably taking 300 to 1,000 shots a day every day of practice. Do you know what that does for your accuracy? How about this? Angle key off the draw is beaten on the breakaway. My goodness. Here comes Durgil, a member of the Syracuse National Champions, to French. He goes high and winds up tasting some carpet as well as Pfeiffer beats him. Yeah, Pfeiffer didn't react that time to his fakes and held his ground and then reacted on the ball, which was a much better idea for him. End-to-end -end action inside 10 minutes, first half. 4-3 Philadelphia. Another 40-foot low shot. This one by Johnny Driscoll. That Bilger covers the five hole. That's kind of disrespectful to the man. McGeady gets double team. But Chris Dent's got the ball one-handed. And drops it back out front for McGeady. And they'll complete the line change. This is more of the checking unit for Philadelphia. Delegati, look at that strength around the neck. Just one-handing the stick up high for McGeady. Well wide, off the glass in the rear. And a nice scoop ground ball recovered by New York. But the open floor ball belongs to Chris Dent. Chris Dent's got to have five or six ground balls. Oh, John Driscoll, an incredible high stick on Delegati. He an incredible be, high stick. He should stick. be thrown out of the game for that one. That was vicious. That was. That was to hurt somebody. Oh, no my doubt about goodness. It. And the arm is in the air, and the net is empty as Bilger's been replaced. But what could have possessed Driscoll? Gary Martin's shot is blocked. They still got to get possession, the, the Saints do, so the wings sure. keep the ground ball. Dent falls down, trips over the carpet, but it comes in front, score! Gary Martin from Lou Delegati, and they're going to rule it off. Freeze violation, no goal. Andy Wilson is out asking for a five-minute major. And look at this penalty coming up against John Driscoll on Lou Delegati. Now watch, we're going to be able to see what, what makes Driscoll so mad. Oh! 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 oh. oh, God. But you see why he did it. Oh, There's yeah. There's no doubt why he did it. Oh, that was disrespectful. 
And here's why it was no goal. Check out Gary Martin's left foot, definitely oh, in the crease. He's well into the crease. Both no feet. Question. Both feet. Good call by the referee. Of course, Delegati putting a foot in the face of Driscoll is not going to hurt him. It's kind of disrespectful, as we said. But Driscoll comes back, and that stick is apparent to 17,000 in the building. Unbelievable. Hey, that's a weapon. You got to remember that. I mean, that stick is a weapon. You can the helmet on or not. I mean, that kind of swing, you're going to hurt somebody bad. Not, not to say what Lou did is right either. And here's Philadelphia. Five on four. French's pass looking across the crease for Delegati is scooped up by New York out front to Randy Natale. And here he comes. One on one. Brad Cott's got to play defense. Score! As he turned Cott's around 30 feet out and beat Bilger with a hopper. Yeah, real nice move by Natale. He had Cott's going backwards and then he just blew by him to the left and he puts the bouncer in the nine hole or in the five hole there. Excuse me. I guess it was off the left foot. Of Bilger, that's the first save that uh, the Bilger really hasn't made that that maybe he should have, but he's just been brilliant up to now. Eight minutes to go, first half, tied at four. Short-handed goal, Randy Natoli. God, you just hate to see that happen as a coach or even a player when you're man up and, and not take your time and work the ball around a little bit and get into the flow of the man up play. Instead of that, you throw it right away and they just come down on a break and score. That hurts. And that is the first shorthanded goal Philadelphia has yielded at the Spectrum all year as they scrum for the ground ball. John Tucker takes the body, allowing Mark DeSico to go for the ball. Great diving play, DeSico, and he's checked from the back. Philadelphia possession. That's another horrible call by the referee. He's got to see where that ball was knocked out to. It's going to be wing possession. It's a fast break. He takes it away, gives the advantage to the defense, to the penalty maker on that one. And one minute, three seconds left. Man advantage, Philadelphia. Into the crook of the elbow is the shot from Brad Cotts. Great placement, but Vinnie Pfeiffer able to close down the gap. Remember, Vinnie Pfeiffer played for this team. They played for the Wings last year, so in all those practices and all those times as the starting goalie, he certainly gets familiar with the shooters. The guy that he didn't play against last year, though, was Brad Cotts, who didn't play in the league. All this action coming while Philadelphia has got the power play. It's McCullough, the scooper. His shot is wide, long side. And Brad Cotts can only settle it down. Time for one more rush with the man advantage. 28 seconds left in counting power play. 6.45, period number two. Tied at four. And this one's living up to its advanced billing. Andy Wilson to Tucker. Meandering toward the top. Goes far wing to Cotts. Cross is right there for French, but he fans. And this will wrap up the man advantage for Philadelphia as John Driscoll comes out. Now there he is, tied at five, tied at four on the scoreboard. Now an even strength on the floor. French. Back and out, back and out. Leaves for Gabrielson. There's Scotty. And that's a 45-second shot clock violation. Philadelphia holds the ball a moment, and Coach Bob Engelke of New York asking for a delay of game. That is the first warning now being given to the bench at Philadelphia for delay of game, Tony. Right. They threw the ball down when the referee blew his whistle after the, uh, they didn't get the 45-second clock shot in time, so they got to get the ball right up, and instead of that, they drop it so they can get a substitution change. So referee Crawford says, don't do it again. First time, Kevin Cook. Loves to work from behind in front to Red Arrow. Midsection shot, Kevin Bilger. The swipe at DeSico from Cook, but a 50-foot pass for Mark Hahn. And Hahn will draw the penalty. It'll be on Tommy Engelke. Clearly from behind, and just a great play by Hahn to keep that ball on his stick. Get the goalie out, now it's six on five. And Philadelphia can spend all day long as they'll bring out Martin for free and French for Gabrielson. Bob Engel keep trying to tell his team go into a man down box. They're not responding. Short hop shot though will be covered by Matty Crowley, but not a clear possession. Philadelphia maintains. French, double teamed. Top of the slot. Brad Cotts dives. Oh! 
Left shoulder save, Pfeiffer, there's the penalty call. So Philadelphia used a minute 10 before the penalty was called. And they will have a man advantage. So tied at four with 4.52 left second period. Back with a Philadelphia power play in a moment. What's called a cross check from behind. Yeah, he definitely gets him from behind. There's no doubt about that. No turn or anything. And the amazing thing is Han's able to keep the ball on his stick. Keep the stick above the ground. Not take the vibration of the hit and, and keep the stick and move the ball. But it doesn't do you any good. Why Why keep the ball for a minute and ten unless you can score out of it, Larry? Because you they can't don't get be scored score. against. Hey, so you don't score, at least you can't be scored on. Oh, that's true. It's, it's, what you want to do is score and then the penalty still counts. That's, that's what you would like. Still stay man up. Program. There's Coach Angle Key. Yeah, no one can bench. say that he didn't come to coach tonight. I mean, My goodness. we could hear him up here yelling and screaming and giving out orders out there to his team. Would, now, he was trying to alert his team that now it's six on five. He was going, man down, man down. What's he looking for there? He wants them to zone it up into like uh, on the five on the dice if he can. He gets 2-1-2 two, two and play his own defense while they got six guys working the ball around instead of just playing man to man and leaving one guy wide open. And now they're playing their setup in a diamond right now against Philadelphia's man advantage unit with Natoli at the top. John Tucker at the top for Philadelphia. Show some patience, work for a good one. Andy Wilson and Tucker go through the middle of the zone. There's Wilson, Delegati. Great looking move by the strong one, Lou Delegati, but to no avail. Yeah, bad angle. Pfeiffer's got that whole thing blocked where any place that Lou can put the ball. Cots a quick look for Tucker, nothing doing. Back out front, Andy Wilson. Fresh 45, though, courtesy of Delegati, with 422 and counting second period. They're going to rotate opposite the ball, so it's a good idea to look to the back corner and skip a man. There it is, there's the look. And Wilson thought he had it. Wound and fired, and John Tucker, the scoop ground ball, to Cots, score! Back Cots! What a whistler from Brad Cots. That's only his second goal tonight. We've seen him take five shots, but I'll tell you what, every single one has been saved or has been a goal. He does not miss the cage. Wow. He plants that one right above the right hip of Vinnie Pfeiffer for a Philadelphia lead on the power play. Mom and dads, you got little boys and girls home and want to be lacrosse players and you want to shoot them proper, you want to teach them proper technique of how to shoot a ball. Watch that man right there, number 30. There's nobody better in the world. Seems to get an awful lot out of his hips. A yeah. lot of torque. He does. He gets his whole body behind it, but it always goes where he wants it to go. Now you see Durgil way ahead with his stick. Yeah. He's cheating. Now the referee moves it back, but see, he got it so far ahead, the ref, and his foot's on the line. <laughs> They're both illegal. Durgil will win his face off. And then Borges just kicks the loose one down at Bilger. No chance. If, you, if, if somebody's going to lift that guy with his technique at that far ahead, he's going to win every time. That angle key's gone crazy on the Saints bench. As Philadelphia has never trailed. Largest lead was a 2-0. It's now 5-4. Gary Martin looking for a cutter. It's Cots! But he's checked from behind by Randy Marino. And Brad is down in the corner, slow getting up. He's the last man up the field and heading straight for the bench. Replaced by John Tucker. Jeff Nicholas. Kind of a throwaway pass by Jeff Nicholas. And a check from Tucker on Nicholas. Bilger breaks it free. It's loose in the crease. And that'll be a crease violation. Yeah, he's allowed. Conley's allowed to go in there and pick that ball up. Uh, but, but the Saints stepped in behind him. That's illegal. So. Yeah, Norm Engelke came in last. That ball seemingly precariously rolling free for several seconds before scooped up by Conley. I'm sorry, that's Tom Engelke. No, that's Norm Engelke. Bob's the coach. Too many right. Engelkees. Yep, the middle brother's the coach, the oldest brother, Norm's the player, and Tommy, the youngest, is a player. Inside three minutes, half number one. All three went to different colleges. All three were all Americans. I know Tommy went to Virginia. Tommy went to Virginia. Norm Bobby, went to Cornell. Right, and Bobby went to Adelphi. Nice save, Pfeiffer off Chris Dents. Up the slot move. And it's picked up by Borges. And I kind of sense New York looking over their shoulder a little bit, aware of the physical play, especially along the boards. Yeah, I think it wears on you, and it keeps coming and coming, and you're, you're looking for it. And, and I think it's going to wear on them physically, too, near the, the middle of the third and fourth quarter. Jeff Goldberg goes one on four, and In Philadelphia, crease. another crease violation. This one on Kevin Kilk or Roddy Marino, one of the two. 
Great job by Bilger again. Bilger's been so strong and tight. And, you know, he's a big boy, and he's really using his body well. He's not reacting to fakes. He's just watching the ball, and then he's using his body so well tonight. And I got to also say that I don't think the Saints are shooting as well as they can shoot. They're, they're really hitting his body a lot tonight so far. Two minutes left first half. If you see Kevin Bilger in street clothes, he's not a very big guy, not a physically intimidating customer, but certainly looks it with the pads. Crunch behind is Johnny Tucker. Jab step, spin move, looking at the top. It's Gary Martin. No, Ricky Free! Rick Free scores. Great job by Tucker. He took about four hits, and now he's telling everybody who hit him on the Saints, come on, hit me again. Come at me. Watch this. Great look. Freed takes a good bouncer, puts his stick low, but he gets the ball to bounce high by letting go of it so that it bounces real close to his own body when he lets go of it, and he's got a screen. You see the screen way out there. I didn't see what player screened, but he jumped up in the air real hard for the goalie to follow. That is assist number three on the night for John Tucker. And there's Ben Pfeiffer who's been beaten six times in less than a half. Tucker now leads the league with 27 assists. A total almost as inspiring as the 30 goals for Brad Cotts. Philadelphia re-ups that two-goal lead with 135 left in half number one. That's Miko Red Arrow. Long ball for Dave McCullough, who's got a little bit of open floor. And New York will work the half-court set. Crowley. No, it's Roddy Natoli off the bench. Met by Bill Durgil. Durgil leaves his feet, though. Commits to leaving his feet. That leaves a man alone. And Kevin Bilger bails his man out. There's off another the example of a bad shot. One minute left. Cots score! Bounce shot! Brad Cots! As the goalie leaves his line, Bradley takes the bouncer. where Pfeiffer makes a decision. He makes a decision to come out and hit McGrath. The ball gets kicked out, kept alive. Who picks it up? Brad Cotts. And you know where that's going. That's going home. Big yeah. bouncer up over the defense that's hit. See, it's a, Pfeiffer comes out. Probably not a, it's probably a good decision, but the ball went loose and Cotts picked it up. The wrong guy picked it up. And it was Matt Crowley left trying to defend the front of the net as Brad Cotts has a hat trick in the first half. Philadelphia has a three goal lead. I think he's got a hat trick in the second quarter. Yeah. Not bad, four goals on, or three goals on four shots. That's accuracy. Once again, Bilger, Durgil's really cheating. I and he gets caught they there. They got caught that time. Interesting that Cotts had the courage to go for a corner, even though he had a defenseman there, still used the great accuracy. That's right. Nice recovery by McGrath. Here he comes. And the low shot in the five hole handle by Pfeiffer. Resch is cutting. Can't accept the pass. And McGrath is going to go off, I believe. Yes. McGrath, a cross check with 35 seconds remaining in the half. I don't like that call either. I really. Call. Yeah, that's a bad call. They just got McGrath with two slashes. He really got a good shot at him. And I. Thought he hit it with more shoulder than he did stick. We'll have to see. It's way up in the air. That's a, not a good call at all. He had the stick tucked into his, his side before he cut contact and then pushed away afterwards. We've certainly seen much worse go ignored. Absolutely. As a timeout has been called by the New York Saints to try to set up for this final power play of the first half, 35 seconds remaining in half number one. I think that uh, Engelke, from me just watching down at his motions, he's telling these guys, you got to bounce the ball. you got to put the ball low. I think one thing you and I have noticed throughout most of this year, Larry, is that when Bilger's been beat, it's been a low bounce shot right. or it's been between his legs. And they're shooting a lot of stuff high, and he's taking it up here in his midsection. He's very good at that. And he's been outstanding tonight at everything high. So I think Engelke's down there saying, hey, you got to start bouncing this ball and putting it low. This is a big goal here. 35 seconds left. You're a man up. You'd love to go in with a 7-5 instead of a 7-4, get some new momentum going. 35 seconds remaining. Philadelphia, their longest lead of the night at 7-4. They'd love to get out of here with a three-goal first-half lead. This could be a momentum turner for the rest of the contest. Goldberg loves to shoot from there. They don't come out on him. 30 seconds. Off the pipe. Off the near side pipe. 
from Jeff Nicholas. Hey, Jeff Nicholas so much like... Uh, and we've got a buzzer going off here. Got a question over here, I guess, at the bench. But Nicholas so much like Brad Cotts. It's a great location shooter. He beat him, put it in the pipe. Still don't know what that horn was for, but Philadelphia probably does not mind. They can reset. There's extra ball out there on the court. I don't know if it was that or not. And again, 24 seconds and counting on a critical first half juncture for Philadelphia. Up by three, down by a man. Straight zone here, they're not rotating. Going to let Bill Draft to stop him for about 30 feet out. Goldberg, he's they, not bashful. They're trying to let him take the outside shot. That's long, nice recovery, Cook. Goldberg into the uh, chin protector of Bilger with five seconds oh. left in the half. A giveaway, Cook, shot, save off the left elbow. Rebound as the half ends. And some extracurriculars between Tucker, Cook, and Resch as they all kind of pile on in. The referees are smart, they'll just get him out of here. I don't know if they're gonna call anything or not. There's no time left on the clock. Looks like there'll be no penalties called. Philadelphia has gotten out of half number one with a three goal lead. Philadelphia seven, New York four. We're at halftime. Stay tuned, everybody. Test living up to its advanced billing, the major indoor lacrosse league championship at the Spectrum. Philadelphia on top, seven to four. We're at halftime. Larry Rosen, Tony Seaman, Mark Sumoff on Prism. We're underway. New goalie in the goal, Larry. We got Larry Quinn down there, and you know what everybody in the world says about Larry Quinn? Probably the best that's ever played the game in the goal. There he is. He's 6'4". His coach, Bob Engelke, says Philadelphia fans should think of him like Ronnie Hextall because he's very active and aggressive and loves to throw that long ball on his own. Of course, Philadelphia begins the half shorthanded right now. After that cross-check minor to Matt McGinney. Yeah, so just as important it was not to let them to score the fifth goal going in, just as important momentum's sake not to let them to have a goal now coming out. And they've got Jeff Goldberg running from the top as they slide through Jeff Nicholas. This Here's Jeff Nicholas to screen. Cook. Goldberg. Shot clock's at eight. Nicholas from the slot. Tries to recover the ground ball. And a check from the rear. And an extra little... Hit from Johnny Tucker. Yeah, Johnny Tucker's some piece of work, isn't he? And a fresh 45. And a nice little bit of ragging there by Mark DeSico, and Mark Hahn will not commit. Yeah, good play by Hahn. Realized Quinn's definitely to the ball. No sense of being five on three, so he comes back in. They set up in their box. Goldberg's got Nicholas walking up the slot and scores. Low and hard on the power play. It's a two-goal game at 7-5. And Nicholas keeps up his accuracy now, his pace. His first shot hit uh, Bilger in the stomach, but the second one he puts off hip on a nice bounce shot and it goes home. You see, they draw over too much. I think they got to recognize Nicholas as the, the hot shooter for this team right now, and they can't give him that. So, a minute two into the second half, and New York has cut the, go the gap to two. Durgil and Borges, even strength for the face. Number two, Tom Durgil wins it clean through his legs, back to his keeper. He kind of lucked out that Gabrielson broke up for a break and didn't realize Durgil was putting the ball between his legs to him. And uh, But it went through and Bilger picked it up, so it worked out all right. Now Quinn needs a couple shots at him for him to get in the flow of this game. He's Remember, he's cold off the bench. He watched Pfeiffer play the first half. Uh, there's nobody better in the world when Larry Quinn is hot. We'll see how he starts off. They list him at 6-4. Tucker has three, and he scores. It squibs on through the cold goalie. How yeah, do you like a, that? That's a big goal because that's an answer to the 7-5 uh, man up goal that the Saints just got. Tucker makes it the whole play, sets it up. You see, uh, Quinter really thought he had the ball squeezed between his legs. It bounces out. It keeps going the right way. Great pass by John Tucker. Looks like it just caught the inside of his right hip, or his right thigh on the bounce, and rolled across the second for Freed. Not known as a major goal scorer, only six in the regular season. And it's eight to five, and as Tony said, a huge goal for Philadelphia. 
Durgil's going to try to win it on his own, but again, he leaves his feet, as he's done several times tonight. Kind of takes himself out of the play. As a coach, you'd love to see, uh, if you're the coach of the Saints, Bob Engelke, you want to see Larry Quinn come up with that save. But whatever, what it does is now it gets Larry Quinn in the game, and, and at least he's become part of the game now. Durgil will come off, as will Borges, the two face-off experts, replaced by Goldberg and for Philadelphia by McGrath. Again, an even strength. Philadelphia, an 8-5 lead. Free takes the man. The ball, though, comes to Goldberg. Nice little spin move. But nothing doing there for Jim Bovic. Yeah, real nice defense then. By, by Greg Manley. By Manley, excuse me. Yeah, real nice shot. Oh, they leave somebody open right in the middle. Sambretto did not realize he was that open. And a crease violation coming. Possession belongs to Philadelphia. Interesting, Vince Sambrato did not realize he had that much time to load and fire. Kind of backed out of point blank range and took himself out of the play a little bit. Yeah, and that's another thing that we've been talking about all night, the physicalness of the uh, right. the Saints causes that because you're wondering where that hits, why isn't that hit coming, and you back out expecting it, and, and there you didn't even get anything, and you were wide open. Good point, Larry. And that's Andy Wilson. Philadelphia running a 2-1-2 offensive set with Tony Resch in the middle. He pops out as a screener. And then breaks off the screen wide open and goes five hole. They play two men on cots, and uh -huh. they let Resch go wild and uh, go free, and, and Resch doesn't make the score. He gets Quinn down on the knees. And he puts it right in his stick. Goldberg takes the hit from Cots, rides him down. Brad's going off. He is going off for a holding at 11.34 remaining in period number three. You see, he gets him up, and then he keeps it there. It looks like when the left arm rides around the head, this refereeing tandem's been calling it. Yeah, that's Mr. Crawford. I, I'm not going to say anything because I may might ref one of my games again this year. So. We'll oh, you had a lot of success with him uh, earlier in the collegiate season at Pennsylvania, didn't you? No and he gave you every questionable call he gave to Penn. <laughs> All right, no comment. Got to watch Nicholas. Got to stay to Nicholas's side, I think, in this man up. Maybe let McCullough and uh, the out other outside shooters have some shots. Kevin Cook, although they're very good players, but Nicholas is the hot gun right now. That's Cook. And McCullough, as Nicholas ranges up the slot. Tucker chasing him down. And that's a weak, wild pass with a power play out of McCullough. He's bailed out, though, by Borges, who comes up with it. Shot clock's down to nine right now, and a whistle. Two-line pass back across the red line, which you can't do with the man advantage. Possession, Philadelphia. And, and over and back, an over and back violation against Philadelphia. Short-handed. And that's a tough one. That gives away the possession quickly without being able to rag some time. Another great play by Tucker defensively then. Just got to stick on that pass enough to calm it down. Now he looks upfield and catches Cots coming in, or Freed coming in, great oh. play. What a great reception by Freed, who looked quickly for Mark Hahn, not quite ready for it. Penalty down to 53 seconds, the breakouts by Dave McCullough. Looks for Kevin Cook, right on his stick. And a left shoulder pad save, Kevin Bilger. Out at the top, Sweeney's shot is well wide. Rebound score by Nicholas on the bounce. And it's an 8-6 contest, again on the power play. Almost looked like none of the wings were picking anybody up on that, that series there. There was a couple of shots and a couple of rebounds. We see the shot from the middle. It's going to miss, going to come off the boards, right to Nicholas. They try to come on him, and of course, uh, Bilger's caught way out to the left because of the first shot. See, it goes over top. He's committed to his knees. By the time it comes out and Nicholas picks it up, there's no way Bilger can get back in. New York is two of three on the power play. Jeff Nicholas has both man advantage goals. And again, Philadelphia must watch. When in hockey, they always call the stupid penalties. Play on, Durgil against Miko Red Arrow, and Durgil trying to scoop it himself, and does. And Brad Cox, the loose one. 
inside 10 minutes, third period. Great Larry effort. Rosen, Tony Seaman, glad you're with us. The Major Indoor Lacrosse League Championship. Great effort by Bill Durgel then on the faceoff. And a lost stick from Muller means it's five on four. Cots, oh, just high and wide, long side. Andy Wilson, though, double teamed as he sweeps the rebound. Conley looks for Cots, steps away. Double team hit by Roddy Marino and Rich Mullen. And Brad Cots a bit slow getting up, heads for the bench. Porges off the left wing. In front had a man, pass behind him though, that Roddy Marino. And back comes Philadelphia. McGrath is open, but they don't give it to him. Instead, Gary Martin does it himself. And Larry Quinn eats that one up. Nice outlet, great dodge step by Borges, working side to side to the right wing. Don Borges. You just see what great athletes we got out here on both teams. You did, you did, as you just mentioned, I mean, Borges just avoids three unbelievable checks coming at him. We see Tucker do the same thing. We see Natoli do it. All, all of them are just such gifted athletes. That was a Jeff Goldberg 40-footer. Oh, and a loose rebound came out in front and was almost tucked home by Norm Engelke, unassisted. But instead, it's Philadelphia. Bilger was too long in the crease then, Larry, and had to get out. There was two Saints there to, to hit him when he came out and knock the ball down, but they didn't pick it up. And here's Philadelphia's checking unit. McGinney, leave captain DeSico. Mark spins, left-hand shot, just squibs wide. Nice recovery, though, by Paul French. Philadelphia up 8-6. You've got to get Quinn moving. The way you get Quinn moving is by sharp passing and hitting the open guy to the opposite side. Really tough to score on him straight on when he can center in and concentrate on a shot. Delegati ranges behind. Looks for Dent off the pipe. Near side pipe from Chris Dent. That's just what we're talking about, though. Delgatti, great job moving the ball over to Dent. And he hits the pipe. Unfortunately, he got Quinn on the move. Real nice getting back by the wings. Real nice job defensively. Although Jim Bovick made a nice play to intercept. And just fires it wide near side. Driscoll the rebound. He's hacked at by Paul French. And now Chris Dent. And just a blind shot inside his shoulder. And McGinney the rebound. He's fought up, though, by Sembrato, who comes out with it. Has a cutter, and Nicholas, over the shoulder shot, never reaches, as Paul French knocks it down to the rear. We've reached the halfway point period number three. It's 8-6 Philadelphia for the North American Cup. Next goal is a big goal, two-goal lead here. They went in halftime with a three. They need the answer to the last goal by the Saints. Tucker puts on the brakes, top of the slot. Two spins, shot is wide, long side. Mark Hahn beaten to the rebound, though. And Philadelphia comes away cleanly to John Tucker. Leaves it on the ground for Ricky Free. That's a great job by Manley intercepting that uh, outlet pass. Nicholas is really trying to cut Tucker off, not let him get the ball. They try to force it to him, it goes by, and Quinn gets it, picks it up. Almost in basketball, when a low post defender fronts his man to not allow the entry pass, that's what they're doing to Tucker and Cots. You got a couple options there. You can go pick for those guys because their, their man is so intent on cutting them off that he's easily picked. Or you can have that guy go and pick for somebody else. Nico Red Arrow is shot well wide, long side. And Arrow, the check from the rear on Rick Freed. Philadelphia possession inside six minutes and counting. And there's Scotty Gabrielson. Don't see that much four checking a la hockey as Kevin Cook is doing on Gabrielson there. Now, because he wants to beat you, then you got a five on four going the other way. That should have been a over and back. <laughs> there's Brad Cotts as they gain the zone. Bradley's open, cutting. And Conley does it alone, and a score. J.C. Conley at 5-6, splits two defenders and Larry Quinn, and knocks it down. Yeah, watch this. Great dip dodge, gets, a, gets ahead, and then he leaps up in the air and puts it on the inside hip. And of course, he's not in the crease when the goal's 
goals scored, so it counts. So we played nine minutes, 31 seconds, the third period. Philadelphia still maintains a three goal lead. Back of the spectrum here, the individual brilliance of J.C. Conley out of Towson State. And ironically, look at Brad Cos. Well, you just started to see him. He was wide open. But you got to give all the credit to J.C. What a great job. I mean, he went through three people for that goal. He's born in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So a bit of a homecoming for J.C. Smallest man on the field. Gives Philadelphia back its three-goal margin. And New York is a difficult team to come from behind against. Dave Evans also oh conscious of playing from the front. Borch is really complaining about Durgil cheating, but doesn't do much good. Bradley, Brad Cotts, gains an easy possession as Durgil does his job, leaves the field for Andy Wilson. There's the pick for Cotts. There goes Conley, same one-on-one. -on -one. Move and score! No! Yes, it's a goal! J.C. Conley uses his quickness at an inside-out crossover step to bang it past Larry Quinn. Can't describe it any better than that. Just watch this move. Steps inside, and then he's got his man beat. Takes two checks on the head. Great shot to the weak side. Puts it home around Quinn. Watch the move. He gets him open. Just that quick stutter step. Beats Tom Sweeney. Then he gets inside. Not much you can do then. And what a great shot to finish. Hey, J.C. Conley's got a couple. Rick Breed's got a couple. As Philadelphia is spreading it out tonight. French has scored. And of course, the hat trick for Brad Cotts. It's 10 6, longest lead of the night. Belongs to Philadelphia. And J.C. Conley, two goals in 19 seconds, both on individual brilliance and quickness. Up the wing comes Borges, tries the stutter step. Tony Resch won't buy that one. Great job by Resch, but a giveaway. Cots gives it to Goldberg. Has Sambrato. And Philadelphia sets in the half court. Maybe a holding penalty coming up as Bill Durgel didn't like that from John Driscoll. Possession Philadelphia, no penalty. Just a possession as Driscoll held the stick of Durgel. Good defense again, very physical, using the body a lot. And as long as Bilger makes the big saves, that's, that you can do that. You can get away with that because you're making the guy pay, even though sometimes he beats you because you're over aggressive. But Bilger's coming up with the big saves, so it's working out real well. This unit's played very well with Dent, French, DeSico, McGeady, and Delegati. They've been a major force. The third line, if you will, Dent comes around the corner and hits the midsection of Larry Quinn. And I think, uh, Larry, this group has played real well defensively. And these are some big boys who can throw that body. Marino looks for the five hole. And Bilger calmly squats and picks it clean to Chris Dent. Inside four minutes, period number three. Philadelphia in charge right now at 10-6. And why not use some clock? Yeah, you can, with 45 seconds, it's really hard to establish a tempo, but there was no reason to break that time, and, and I think they used their heads and did some good things. Delegati's shot winds up on the back of the net, and it's just simply handed from Driscoll to Quinn. And Philadelphia really hustling toward its bench to make the changes easier for the coaching staff and not allow the breakouts. Yeah, they're into it. Their, their intensity's been excellent all night. The crowd gets them up. The crowd gets them involved. And, you know, that's like another extra guy out there when they start yelling for you and you got the momentum going, and it keeps the momentum going. It's Kevin Cook at the top trying to get around Tony Resch and does, but without a shooting angle. As he comes around in front, Kevin Cook, somewhat surprising to see just these simple one-on-one -on -one moves out of New York. Bilger's length of the floor pass for Hahn goes goalie to goalie. Bilger to Quinn, and back comes New York. Final three minutes, period number three. There's Nicholas again, the hot shooter, 10 feet out, right point-blank range beats Kevin Bilger. 
Yeah, you know, he's the hot kid, and he's just such a good shooter. He's putting the ball away on the corners and uh, keeping it low off the knees and the, uh, the ankles, and that's where he's finding success. <laughs> That's number four, so he's the hot man. I think we gotta, you gotta put a guy on him and make sure that every time Nicholas is on the court, somebody's in his eyeballs. Another one of the Virginia players with a great location on his shot. There's a great uh, family uh, tradition there. Dad went, uh, was a great lacrosse player and went to Virginia. Uh, the family was raised in Cold Spring Harbor, a real uh, heaven for good lacrosse players up in Long Island. Uh, there's Jeff, there's Kevin who played for me at Penn just graduated two years ago. It's 10-7 with two minutes, 22 seconds remaining, period number three. New York, a clear possession, working to our left. Randy Great move Foley. by Anatoly. Goes across to McCullough. That Bilger's there. The iron will of Kevin Bilger does not buckle. 10-7. And now Philadelphia at that walk it up pace. Two minutes remaining in the quarter, two minutes! Making no uh, pretense of their desire to play the half-court set. Yeah, I don't, I'm, you know, I, I think they got here with some transition, and, and I think they got this far season with the uh, up-tempo beat, and then if you if you don't have it, then pull it out. Uh, they're going back to a year ago where they're walking it up now. I wonder if it would have minute 40 left in the third period and 15 to go in the fourth, if it's too soon to do this. Shot clock's at seven. As Scott Gabrielson is floored, good hustle though by Hahn and Manley to prevent the three on one. It's a three on three. The trailer's angle key. McCullough loses possession. Angle key's got it though. Scoops the ground ball. Out front to Natoli. And he's the shaker baker. He's got that little stutter step and he'll beat you that way. You've got to be careful with him. Looks for the drop pass to Roddy Marino. It comes out to angle key to Marino. Left shoulder save, Kevin Bilger. With less than a minute to go, period number three. McCullough tries the ball fake and loses possession. And diving in the corner is Greg Manley of Philadelphia. And perhaps a little bit of a loose carpet with 46 seconds remaining, third period. They've uh, already turned the shot clocks off, although there might be a one second differential. Dave Evans still wants a timeout, which he will get. All uh, right, certainly now 10 to seven, you got 45 seconds on the shot clock, you got 41 seconds left in the quarter. Coach Evans probably saying, let's use it. Let's get down to seven, eight, nine seconds left, then we'll work for the shot. See if we get, let's go in with a three goal lead. That's what we came out at halftime with. It'd be nice to end the third period. If we can possibly get it up to four or five, but we're gonna take the best possible shot, not give them anything else to give them a reason or the ability to come back and make it two. As we look at Bob Engelke, a well-known name in uh, outdoor lacrosse in New York, Long Island area. Meantime, on the Philadelphia bench, Dave Evans, not doing a whole lot of coaching this trip because it's a pure offensive set coming up, and that is the responsibility of Mike Page. There's Mike with the red hair down in front, setting the scene for this 40 seconds remaining. So far uh, this year, the Wings have been shooting at 29% uh, clip during the game average, and tonight they're 34.4, so they're a little bit above what they've been for the season, whereas the Saints, not a real good shooting team all year long at 23%, tonight only 18%. And if it wasn't for Jeff Nicholas, they'd probably be down around 10%. And there's Dave Evans looking on with 35 and counting. Philadelphia, five on five. Brad Cotts goes all the way wing to wing for Andy Wilson, out front to John Tucker. Now Engelke's got a decision to make. Do you go out and stretch him out where they are? Or do you sit in and let them take the last shot and, and work? And they're trying stretching it out. I think that's dangerous against Cots and Tucker. Tucker's so good without the ball. 10 seconds and counting for Delegati. Working on Sambrano. Five, four, three, and she's history. Period number three comes to a close. Philadelphia does not get a shot off there, but they hold that three goal lead with just one period remaining. Back with that final fourth quarter in a moment.
Here's a look at the final tally of the third stanza that got the Saints back within three. Okay, you see the cut into Nicholas who cuts underneath and he's gonna take the hard right-handed shot. Once again, great location and beats Bilger to Bilger's left. So Nicholas certainly has kept them in the game in the third quarter, there's no doubt about that. He has the hat trick. Philadelphia averages over 15 a game. New York just a little bit less, but New York is the number one defensive team, averaging just uh, over 10 allowed. Philadelphia third in goals against. And again, the shots have favored the Saints all night long. Right now it's 38-29 Saints. Philadelphia clearly the more accurate. 33% as opposed to 27% in the third quarter. There's our summary, Nicholas Freed and Nicholas again. And then Philadelphia first back out to a four goal lead. It was cut down to three at 10-7. And Cots, they keep silent. Second, first quarter, Cots nothing. Second quarter, three. Third quarter, nothing. Let's see if he explodes in the fourth. Well, they had Rich Mullen on him in that third period. Rich from CW Post, one of only two or three guys that played defensive lacrosse in college assigned to Brad Cotts. And Gary Martin being forechecked, gives it up. Uh-oh for McCullough. Make that Jeff Nicholas, rather. And Nicholas just backs it off and accepts the possession. New York must remember you can't get three goals in one possession and maintain their methodical pace. There's Nicholas cutting up the middle, spins. Midsection save Kevin Bilger. And he's got an outlet for Gary Martin. Looked like tried a quick touch pass from Mark High, but instead it's Jeff Nicholas right winging. Way wide and over the top. Real good defense by Resch. Just as Nicholas was letting go of the ball, he gave him a shove, really threw the accuracy off. One of the first times tonight that Nicholas has missed the cage, and you got to compliment Tony Resch on that fine play. Tony, is there a sense when you're carrying a lead and the game is getting, you know, closer to the end of watching the clock, even though you know you're not supposed to? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a big tendency. I think there's a big tendency to do that as a coach more than a player. <laughs> and you're saying, you know, hey, if we can only take 30 seconds off every time down and limit their number of shots. But I, I wonder if that's how really Philadelphia got here. You know, I don't think it is. I think it's breaks. And, and I think, Quinn, you've got to get them moving. And, and your, your uh, stand-up 6-5-1-5 five five offense isn't going to do that as well as transition is. And here comes Borges on the right wing. We'll roll behind and look for Cook out front. He's cleared out by French. Score! As he's falling down, Dan Borges accepts the check from DeSico and puts it by Bilger. And hello there, it's 10-8. Yeah, this is a real good play. Borges is one of the players that has the size and strength to uh, be able to absorb the physical presence of a guy like DeSico and to, to absorb the physical punishment that the uh, Wings have been able to put out so far tonight defensively. And he gets by the final push and puts an underhand shot off the hip of Bilger. And so, Larry, they, it, you know, by slowing it down and getting that tempo, you take the crowd out of it a little bit. You don't hear the, you know, you're missing that six man. Your, your whole set, your whole flow gets a little mixed up here. And you can just kind of feel the Saints coming on now and gaining some momentum. Remember, these Saints are the defending champions, so they've got some championship pedigree. As back it goes to Norm Engelke, to Driscoll. By the way, Larry Quinn got another assist on that goal. The goalkeeper to our left. And Sambrato goes low around Manley and builds her handles at the 12.50 mark. And Philadelphia not even looking for the quick outlet. Yeah, I think they need to pick it up now. I definitely think you got to pick it up. You got to pick up the intensity on defense that they had. You got to pick up the flow on offense. Got to get the crowd back. Got to need a couple goals now. Quinn settling in, and that's dangerous. John Tucker's shot is wide, short side. He's got a good angle to get the rebound, though, and does. Shot clock still cruising, though, down to 12. Tucker realizes it has a man just wide. Manley set up. Rebound. Mark Hahn couldn't come up with it. He's been quiet tonight. And in the open floor, here comes Sam Brada. Cross to Jeff Goldberg, tries the ground ball shot. But Mark Hahn has it. He's out fought by Goldberg, though. And then builds your handles. They need a substitution here. This line is tired. 
for the wings. And I think it'd be a good idea to get them off, and they've had the Saints out here for just as long, and they're not going to be able to change as quickly, so it might be a good idea, and that's what Coach Evans does. He's got a change line. He puts the Cots line out here. And there's Tucker Head for the bench, leading his line off for Wilson and Cots. And Cots. 30-foot pass up the left wing for J.C. Conley. Looking for the cutting Brad Cots, but he's covered. So they bring it back out, restart with Martin. Cots getting a lot of attention. Couldn't handle that pass around his knees, Tony. Kind of inside out at Brad. Yeah, that's real tough to handle your way down low. And we've mentioned many times about Cots' pocket in his stick. It, it doesn't really enable him to make some of those hard pass uh, catches there, so. There's Kevin Cook working on Conley. In front score! Wide open is Rodney Marino. And it's 10 to nine with 10.59 remaining. That's what this team, the Saints are so good at, is that offside, you get that defenseman who looks across and studies the ball. We call it ball watching. And the other man breaks in. You see the ball here on the near side, and you see that the man broke right in, Roddy Marino, and he puts it down low and, and beats uh, Pilger, who really has no chance. Cook with the great eyes, makes the stutter step, sees Marino across cage, puts it home. Rex took those eyes off for that few seconds. And all of a sudden, it's 10-9. And the crowd begins to respond here. And we're going to go right on down to the wire for the Major Indoor Lacrosse League Championship. Yeah, you don't get this far as the Saints have and, and be the defending champions in the league and have these kind of athletes without responding. You're not going to walk away and win this game. Now, here's a chance for transition. I think you got to pick that up instead of standing and watching. Yeah, Beghini looks to Durgil, who heads for the bench, replaced by Delegati. And there's Matt Beghini getting an awful lot of minutes tonight with Chris Den, right winging for Delegati. Takes the hop and loses possession. DeSico misses his check, which frees up Matt Crowley, left wing. It's holy. Borges for the tie. Saved in the five hole. Bilger. Dance open. There goes Chris. Only goal number two for Chris. And I'll tell you what, Larry, there's nobody in the world that deserves this more than Chris Dent. His hard work off the ground tonight. Great outlet pass by Bilger, and then it's come catch me if you can. And the Saints even threw somebody from the wing. He absorbs the check, puts it away off hip. Great shot, great play. Well done, Chris Dent. You deserve it, big guy. Chris played at Penn State. A native of Lower Marion High School. Great high school player, real good job at Penn State. Coming out here, first year as a rookie, really learning the game. What a what an unbelievable amount of uh, strides he's made in improving over the course of the of the winter season here with the MILL. Turgill will be called for hitting from behind. No, possession belongs to Philadelphia. No, then I had it right. Possession New York, as Turgill did have the hit from the rear. It's Miko Red Arrow. I've, I've learned that you never second guess Larry Rosen, so <laughs> you can't do it either. Nice defense. As McCullough broke down, it was broken free. And Philadelphia has a new life now following the dead goal. Gabrielson, shot, rebound. McGrath had a look at it as he was flying, and Freed can't come out with it. Look at that over the shoulder pass from Kevin Cook, wildly at the center. Recovered there by Tom Sweeney. Cross to Muller. And he's checked for the rear. Crease violation? No. Push violation, Philadelphia. In the person of Manley. And the Saints will have possession down by two with 9.26 remaining. Got the crowd back in it. That's a big save by Bilger, a great pass. Then scores, crowd's back in it. Starting to get the team back in it. They're starting to hit a little bit more again. Sambrato working one-on-one. -on -one. And he'll start at the top with Nicholas. Moves to his right, tries to angle off to Seco. Comes around in front, and Bilger hugs the post with the right hip. 
inside nine minutes. That's a great call, Larry. He sure did. He says, no way you're putting this in. I'll move this pipe before you're going to put this one by me on the inside. Tucker can't scoop the ground ball. And Bolvik wants a penalty or a piece of John Tucker. And Tucker can do better than that. Tucker and Bolvik still going at it. And now DeSico reminds Tucker, hey, you're the captain. We need you on the floor up by two. And the cooler head of Mark DeSico prevails. Here's Brad Cotts as the crowd begins to rise in front of us with 818 and counting. And here's a violation called well off the ball. Yep, seven men on the floor. And a bit of a conference among the officiating crew, Tony. Bail me out here. I can't. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what he's calling. It's he's got Andy Wilson heading for the box. Too many men on the floor. And Dave Evans is livid right below us. It's Andy Wilson in the box. That's a bit of a mental mistake clearly against Philadelphia. And they were caught with too many men on the field. I don't know. I, you know, I can't. I'm not going to no. comment because... I got my own opinion about that referee who called that call, but I, I didn't see seven men on the field. And uh, sometimes you get caught up in numbers and you see a guy come off and come on as a ref and it's hard with that flow going in in front. New York has two power play goals tonight. Goldberg! Wise and fires his rest clears. To Tucker. Long ball! Oh! What a great concept though from John Tucker trying to find the angle to Ricky Freed inside eight minutes. Critical juncture of this one. Philadelphia down a man, up by a pair. Goldberg at the front. Again, Nicholas has both power play goals for New York tonight. Goldberg, 120 and counting on the penalty. Goldberg again at the top. Will wide, fire, wide. Rebounds in the air. Tucker just bats it out. What mental concept, what toughness from John Tucker. And I, a great concept here by Evans. I don't know if he's told his man down team to do this, but one, oh no, don't let him shoot. Wow, Nicholas off the near side post. I'm just gonna say they're letting Goldberg shoot from the outside. Not a bad idea, hasn't been effective from there tonight, but don't let Nicholas have the ball there. 53 seconds and counting, man advantage. The ball was beneath the legs of Goldberg, and now it's Tony Resch. Just trying to muscle his way through traffic, and McGrath will come out with it. Oh, McGrath tries a dipsy do, but gets a piece of Natoli. Could have been a penalty there. And an over and back against the Saints called here. Yeah, now I would be furious if I was Bob Anglekey because that was definitely a trip. John Tucker trying to rag some time as Brad Cotts off the bench with 23 seconds remaining. Man advantage. What a shot this will be for Philadelphia if they can not allow the power play goal here. Tucker kicks it toward the New York bench. Over and back, Philadelphia. Philadelphia looking for a quick change. Look out. Look out. Cook's got a man. It's Goldberg. Can't handle the high pass. With 10 seconds left on the man advantage. Andy Wilson will come out in five. Three, two, one. What a job shorthanded by Philadelphia. As Wilson is out. Conley stops and hops. That's a rising whistler from Conley just to top the bar. I don't know, you've been down here for a man down for two minutes and then you come down and within seven seconds take a 30-yarder. That doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. Goes in, it's a great shot, but it doesn't, and now they're back in your face again, and Bilger's got that concentration that he's got to... Crawley trying to work on Conley and does, but Bilger's showing all kinds of cool. With 5.43 remaining, Philadelphia walking it up in the person of Ricky Freed. Big game for Rick tonight. Came up big in the championship. And now Matt McEady. Shot clock's at 25. Game clock at 5.20. McEady beats his man. Oh, just wide, long side. And the rebound belongs to New York. Long outlet. Skips off the stick of Brody Moreno. And Chris Dent can look up uncontested as we reach the five-minute mark. Bo 
both teams tight, both teams a little nervous right now. It's a, it's, it's a big goal, 11-9. You certainly would love to see that third one go in here, give you that three-goal lead. Oh, McGinney back passes looking for the cutter. Instead, it's Chris Dent, still 25 on the shot clock. At McGinney. McGinney, the long pass, French has strength there, short hop, save Quinn. Covers it outside his crease, but the violation belongs to Philadelphia. The ball belongs to New York with 433 in counting. Okay, another time. Now, you know, just like you want to go ahead three, the Saints do anything to get back within one, get that momentum back. Great move, Borges. Good double team, though, cover up by Gary Martin to bail out Tony Rash. Yeah, real good team defense, real good concept. Slough in, help out the guy with the ball. The Driscoll thing, goes down. The one thing you got to be careful with against the Saints is they draw you to do that, and then they hit the open man on far side. And Gary Martin now just working over Sambrato. Inside four minutes. And Bradcott sweeps it back to Chris Dent, who uses his keeper, Kevin Bilger. And Bradley doing a lot of little things well, too, besides just shooting the likely MVP of the season. Far and away, the leading scorer in the league, Brad Cotts, playing a good defensive game as well. 3.33 and counting, fourth period. The North America Cup on the line. Philadelphia ahead by a pair. That's Ricky Freed. has got a lot of space. Has a man. Gabrielson. Rebound. Might have gone off the defenseman who came in to help out Dan Borges. Instead, it's one-on-one -on -one with Normie Engelke. Looks at John Tucker. Bails it for Marino's shot, which is wide, short side. That's Borges looking behind with Mark Hahn. As we reach the three-minute mark, Nicholas, he's the gunner. Nice day, nice day. Scott Gabrielson. Breaks it free, but Nicholas has it. The hop step shot is wide. Look at the high rebound. And nail from behind was Freed. Philadelphia possession with 248 and counting. Nice job by Freed. He kept his back so that if anybody hit him, it was going to definitely be from behind. They come up with a high ball like that. Timeout call. Timeout call. With 248 remaining, it's a two goal lead. Be sure to come back for the dramatic finish. We are back. Dave Evans has his team in command. 11-9 with 2.48 and the ball. And play is on. Conley being forechecked by Darren Miller. Miller working him over. Breaks it free. And it's Randy Natoli. Dangerous. Conley sweeps it off his stick. And Natoli breaks out alone with it. Had a shovel pass, but Andy Wilson came up with a piece. And Philadelphia clean possession. With 2.24 remaining, they use Bilger. And Tony, when do you think about pulling the keeper? Oh, man, you're down by two. I think you got to do it soon, but you got to get the ball before you can do it. Big possession here again for the Wings. Now you can really work on tempo. Now you're under two minutes. Now's when you want to use every possible second. There's a great play. This could be. Oh, Gary Martin chooses the five hole. It's John Driscoll off the pass from Quinn. As we count it down to 152, Driscoll with Wilson. Shot is way wide. Who's got the loose one, McGrath or Cook? Nobody. What a shot given by McGrath. Recovered by Engelke with 138 as Quinn heads for his bench. Here's Larry Quinn at the top of the zone, not coming all the way off just yet. That's what just wonderful defense by the Wings off the ball, especially. Borges, low shot score! Dan Borges with 82 seconds remaining. It's a one goal game again at 11 to 10. And that's the one you can just feel the, just all the pressure and the enthusiasm and everything in the whole place kind of go, whoa, as Borges hits on a roll. That's the second time tonight he's hit the same exact move. Sweeps off, drops the stick, and he gets Pilger on the inside on a good bounce shot. Now, Durgil's face-off, so important to the Wings. It's 11-10 Philadelphia with one minute, 22 seconds remaining. And we'll set the floor for Philadelphia 
It's Durgill on the draw with Tucker, Conley, McGrath, and Resch. Cook, Borges taking the draw, Natoli, and Jim Bovic out for the Saints, and Durgill wins his most important draw of the year to McGrath. And they go backwards to Resch and spread the floor. Nice catch by Conley. Three on two with Durgill and Tucker to Durgill to Tucker. Conley. And maybe one pass too many, coach. Yep. Last minute of play in regulation. I agree with you, Larry. When you know you got a 45 second clock, I think you got to take that shot at one time or another. There's Cook to Natoli with 44 seconds, looking for some help. Goes to Cook, he's open. The bounce shot is over the top. Philadelphia possession with 38 seconds. And you got to give the ball to John Tucker, and you got to say, Johnny, timeout. Timeout. That's a good timeout. That's a great timeout by Dave Evans, who has definitely come into his own, I think, this year as a coach, using his leadership. Great timeout. Philadelphia by one with the ball. It's 11-10 with 38 seconds remaining. And Dave Evans has his team surrounding him as we go down to behind the bench and Prism's Mark Zuma. Mark? Larry Rosen, ever since the goal by Chris Dent, this crowd is really in a frenzy. They are going crazy here in anticipation of a Wings victory, but still 38 seconds to go. Now, since about the two-minute mark, Dave Evans has said short shift guy. He wants his guys out there for a quick 30-second burst, then back on again. Right now, they got 38 seconds with which to do it. Gentlemen? All right, Mark, short shifts indeed. Our crowd tonight here at the Spectrum, 16,042. Yet another huge crowd to see Wings lacrosse, and they've gotten their money's worth. And Kevin Bilger has been the rock of granite in the nets for Philadelphia and perhaps the unsung MVP of this squad. He sure has done a great job. You know, really interesting. I'm yelling, great timeout, great timeout. You got two concepts here. The, the timeout lets you set up offensively, but it allows the defense to set up and maybe get a double team or someplace that they want to try or at least get a matchup that they want it. Before you give the ball to John Tucker with no timeout, let him go 38 seconds, maybe you can kill it. Very interesting, they're giving the ball to Brad Koch. That really surprises me yeah. at the end line. Let's see what he does, they put Miller on him. Play is on, he'll use his goalie. And Kevin Bilger outside the crease can stay there all day. Muller's gotta go get him. Bilger, oh a tough pass for Koch. He can't come up with it. Ground ball picked up Gary Martin, back to Bilger at 22. Counting it down. Bilger again plays catch to Tucker. Dangerous now That's with 12 the seconds. There's the guy I would give the ball to is John Tucker. Eight seconds remaining. One last rush for New York. There it is. Driscoll. He's in. He shoots. It's saved. It's over. The Wings have won the major indoor lacrosse league championship. Matt McGee, the Wings have won it. 
by a final score of 11 to 10 in dramatic fashion. They're the champions. We'll come back for the presentation of the North American Cup in just a moment. Major Indoor Lacrosse on Prism has been brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of Major Indoor Lacrosse. It's the right beer now. By U.S. Air, fly the USA on U.S. Air. By the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Hotel, headquarters of the Philadelphia Wings. By STX, when you think lacrosse, think STX. And by Gold Medal Sporting Goods. With 10 convenient locations, it's the official sporting goods store of the Wings. Welcome back. The Mill Championship belongs to Philadelphia. There's league president Chris Fritz, our halftime guest, and his partner Russ Klein, with Spectrum officials down on the floor beneath. And let's go down to Chris for the presentation of the North American Cup. I want to bring out Mike French and Dave Evans, the head coach, the man who made the Wings win this game. Thank you. But John Tucker. Let's have a hand for John Tucker. Excuse me. I want to introduce Jay Hagerman, the Spectrum. He's going to present the North American Cup. The team captain, John Tucker, and general manager, Mike French. Well, there's a great scene, Larry Rosen. I don't think there's too many times in anybody's life when they get to raise up in the air a world championship trophy. And there's 16 young men and two goalies who deserve all the credit of the world along with an outstanding coaching staff. John Tucker, awarded MVP, I believe for this championship game, if not for the season, had four assists. He does so many things. I mean, his defense tonight was just incredible. His physical force. And there goes the two captains, two defensive specialists, way from the beginning, and they've shown great leadership all year long. DeSico and Resch lead the victory lap for the 1989 Major Indoor Lacrosse League champion Philadelphia Wings. And number 30 gets to lift it up in the air. I hope he doesn't drop it. <laughs> He adds to his 28 tonight with three more for 31. What a year. There's Captain DeSico. What a lovely scene. These guys have shown such incredible dedication on their own. No, they don't make a lot of money playing this game. They've got an intense love of the game. Many come from Northern Maryland all the way to Philadelphia for their weekly practice. And they've hung together as a group, believed in Evans, believed in Page, and believed in one another. And they walk out in the spectrum as champions. And as you mentioned before, what a great effort by Kevin Bilger. My God, for three quarters, he was, they couldn't put anything by him. Finally got to him a little bit in the fourth quarter. But what a great, as you great say season. That, let me just interrupt you there, because I see the uh, number one goal scorer in the league, Brad Cotts, down with our buddy Mark Zumov on the field. Take it away, Mark. Boy, it's noisy down here. It is joyous. Is this the biggest lacrosse moment of your career? This is a big thrill. Uh, when the USA team went up to Toronto and we won the world championships up there, it was very comparable, but the fans weren't as loud and the fans weren't as close as this. So the thrill is just, you know, a lot, a lot larger, more intense. Brad, the Wings wanted you to play last year. You couldn't because you were well, you were concentrating on your studies at the Wharton School. I bet you're glad now that uh, at least you left the books home tonight. Yeah, you know, it was a rough semester. I mean, a lot of late night studying because of practice and all, but I, I'd do it again any day. I mean, with a team like this, the guys had so much heart. We had a great time. I think that's why we played so well, is we had fun together. You coach with our color commentator, Tony Seaman of Pennsylvania. Is this your last game as a wing? Uh, is this mine? I don't know. I've got to see what my schedule is like next year. I'll be down in Virginia. Uh, Coach Evans says, you know, he wants me to play here again, so if I can work it out, I'll do it. 
Why shouldn't he want you to play? You've scored twice as many goals as the nearest guy in the major indoor lacrosse league. I mean, we're talking Wayne Gretzky type stuff here. So what do you attribute your unbelievable success? Well, you know, I think the coach had a lot of confidence in me and put me in scoring situations a lot. And, uh, you know, luckily I had guys to get me the ball, but we kept the ball moving well enough. We had a lot of opportunities. The quote of the night is the fact that you didn't even know you were getting extra money for winning the championship here tonight. No, we didn't. We are getting extra money. I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know it. Brad, thanks very much. Thank you. Brad Cotts, the Wings, the major indoor lacrosse league champions, perhaps Larry Rosen and Tony Seaman, will have more as the night goes on. Gentlemen. All right, thank you very much, Mark Zumont. It's an 11-10 final. Philadelphia wins it. Tony, a little bit of a low-scoring contest, probably due to Philadelphia backing it off tempo-wise in the second half, and yet they were able to get that big goal out of Chris Dent to seal it up. Yeah, that's for sure. They, they really did slow it down. I don't think that was to their benefit, but they did that, and they come out with a win anytime you can win. That, that's the most important thing. I think both goalies played great. They're shooting against Larry Quinn in the second half. Not that Pfeiffer didn't do a great job, but uh, maybe the uh, Saints stepped up the defense a little bit better, too. Well, Coach, you know what it feels like as a coach to win a huge one. Let's go to Mark Zumoff with uh, our favorite guy, Dave Evans, who has a new sport coat because he's going to get that one ruined when he goes back into the locker room with the champagne. Mark, go ahead. Larry here with Coach Dave Evans, and the team has a sort of mascot in the rock group, Guns N' Roses, don't you? Yeah, we do kind of, Mark. It kind of started about, I guess, halfway through the season, and uh, Tony Rush, Mark DeSico, and a couple of guys somehow identify with this uh, rock group. I wouldn't know if they walked in the door, to be honest with you, but uh, I tell you, since we adopted them as our little mascot, we haven't lost, we've only we've lost one game since then, so uh, I don't know. You're going out and buying Guns N' Roses albums, I guess, now. This is a labor of love for you. By that, I mean professional athletes who win championships elsewhere. They are paid much more handsomely than you. Everyone here has another full-time job. You have a full-time job. The extra money you're going to make is very little. What is it like to succeed at a labor of love? Well, I think, Mark, that uh, anybody who's been involved in any kind of amateur or professional sport, whether it's a professional sport, whether you're getting paid a lot of money, whether you're, getting, whether you're doing it more for the love of the game like we are here, I think when they get into a game like this, as great a game as this has been or as this was, in front of a tremendous crowd like this, I How think the monetary repeat? thing totally is, is, is irrelevant. I know I, I, I will, it probably won't hit me for a couple of days. I'll be on the plane back to Vancouver by the time it hits me. But uh, what we've done here, but I, I think we've accomplished a lot in, in giving the game to the people here in Philadelphia, giving a championship to the team in, uh, to Philadelphia. Uh, I hope now the, flowers, or the Flyers can kind of uh, follow our lead and win another one here. Thanks very much, Dave Evans. Dave Evans talking about going back to Vancouver where he is a greenskeeper involved in data sales with AT&T is number two, John Tucker, the captain for the Philadelphia Wings, and we have John with us right now. John, and we also have Kevin Bilger, the goaltender. Why not? It's a party. Let's bring them both in. Let me take you, John, first. Biggest moment in your lacrosse career? You played at Johns Hopkins, which is a power. Uh, yeah, this, this ranks right up there. I've, uh was lucky enough, you know, win a national championship or anything. There's nothing like this with these kind of people here. It's nothing like it. Yeah. Kevin, I have to ask you, Kevin Bilger, the Wings goaltender, I had the privilege of being in the locker room before the game, and I thought goalkeepers were supposed to be out of their mind before the game. You were cool, you were calm, you were talking to all the guys. Are you usually like that? Uh, yeah, you'll notice some guys do like to jump around. I'm just trying to get my concentration down because uh, most of my game is uh, psychological. So I just sit there and try to picture in my mind standing there and making a save. And that's, that's about it. Ah, uh, the mind games. John Tucker, back to you for a second, talking about playing at a lacrosse power like Johns Hopkins. The question was broached before the game, how big is the indoor game going to become in relation to the outdoor college game, and how do the purists feel about it? What do you think a, a win like this will mean in terms of the impact, not only in the Philadelphia area, but the big crowd here tonight making a much larger impact in general? Right. I, there's, um, if anybody were to come up here and see this game in front of this crowd um, and the kind of excitement this type of game uh, builds, I don't see how that um, how, how no one can like it. You know, I think that it's, um, it's catching on as far as fever go. Go. <laughs> the fever goes. And, um, you know, hopefully we can add a few new cities next year. And um, we're doing it the right way. I think we're taking it nice and slow. And, you know, hopefully in five years from now, it'll be as big as the outdoor game. Kevin, is it fair to ask you what you're going to do tonight? Uh, <laughs> we're going to all get together and party our butts off tonight. That's all I got to say. Hard-earned, gentlemen. Congratulations. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, uh, chances are they will spend all their winnings in one place. It's not much, but the memories will live forever. The Wings, the North American Cup champions of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. Gentlemen. Great job, Mark, down on the field. Uh, 
What smiling faces out of John Tucker. John, as hard a working athlete as you'll see anywhere, and Kevin Bilger, the quiet guy, fitting almost that those two are the final voices that we hear from on this night. Yeah, sure is, Larry. We, two months ago, you and I sat here and we said to everybody, well, it's going to be goaltending. Can Kevin Bilger do the job? Vinny Pfeiffer's gone. Kevin Bilger did the job. He sure did. We said John Tucker is the great athlete. He's the great all-around player. He has consistently, once again, done a great job. And we said the new added commodity to the wings was Brad Cotts, and his scoring was going to bring in a new presence to them and, and push them on. He doubles anybody in the whole league. They're the world champions. All right, it was a one-goal game when the uh, pass out from Kevin Bilger allowed Chris Dent to get out in the open floor and give the Wings the goal that really gave them the victory, if you will. Here comes Dent looking right at you. Yeah, what a well-deserved goal this is. A great opportunity for him because he works so hard defensively and, and ground ball-wise, and he, he scores on one of the best goalies to ever play the game, right off the hip on the stick side, and just a great shot, and boy, does he enjoy that one. And, of course, uh, in the game's final moments, New York had Larry Quinn pulled and wound up with an unbelievable scoring chance as they pick it off in midair. I was really surprised to see John throw that pass. Uh, you got it in your stick. There's only a few seconds left. And, and then there's nobody back except the goalie. And it goes past that stick. And, and it could have been two on one, but it's one on the goalie. And if Bilger's ever got to make the greatest save of his life, he's helped out because Driscoll misses the net. And all along the bench, when they realize the breakaway is coming, imagine what's going on in Dave Evans' mind. Looks up, sees the breakaway coming on in, and Bilger gets a piece with one second left on the left elbow. There you see it in the background, and there's the victory. Yeah. The sweet moment of victory for Coach Dave Evans and a hard-working group of Philadelphia Wings. And over the bench they come. Tony, as a coach, can you get a sense of relief at that moment? Uh, sum up the feeling, if you can, from Dave Evans' perspective. Well, to tell you the truth, I, I've been so close, but I, I've never got the thrill of saying, wow, we won it. Uh, we've been close before, but I know his, his heart was in his mouth in those last five seconds when he said, oh, my God, everything we planned, we did so well killing the ball to the final end. And, and then there, there they are with a fast break, four, one on nothing with four seconds left, and please, God, dismiss or build your come up the biggest of your life, and, and he does, and, and then you're just, like, on top of the world. How many people can ever say they're the best at something they do? And they and did it uh, in the final seconds in the most dramatic of, of ways possible. Uh, downstairs, just below us in the locker room right now, the Philadelphia Wings have got a chance to get back amongst themselves. We're eavesdropping, sneaking on in, and the bubbly is firing. There's Tony Resch, the assistant captain. There's the cup. And a hard-earned, well-deserved moment of private triumph. That, excuse us for eavesdropping on. Kevin Bilger comes on in with Philadelphia Wings, major indoor lacrosse league champions, 1988-89. Congratulations. Tony, how about summing it all up for us? Uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful year. Dave Evans uh, did a great job. You know, you got to go right up to the top, too. Mike French is the general manager. He pulls in Mike Page, and Mike Page does a wonderful job with the offense. Dave Evans does his usual good job with the defensive end of the field. Uh, Brad Koch is the great addition scoring. John Tucker's the great athlete. But you got the whole blend there, too, because you got guys like Dent who go in the, in the corners and fight for the ball, and you got Gary Martin who does the same thing. And you can go through name after name after name, and there's so many great players, and they put it all together, and they win the biggest game of their lives. And Conley gets a couple of big ones. Freed gets a couple of big ones. Dent gets the goal that seals the victory for Philadelphia. What a way to end the season. Tony, it's been a pleasure again. Thanks a lot, buddy. Larry, you're the best. Thank you. Major Indoor Lacrosse League Championship belongs to these fellas, the Philadelphia Wings. Our thanks to John Slobotkin, J.R. Aguilla, our director, a wonderful technical crew. For Mark Zumoff and Tony Seaman, I'm Larry Rosen. The Wings are champions. We'll see you next year, everybody.